Hello everyone, this is Dr. Vishal Tevedi from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering IIT Guwahati and what we were discussing, we were discussing about the different aspects of the host factor system in this particular chapter. So far what we have discussed, we have discussed about the, uh, we have discussed about the uh, different types of host, right. So we have discussed about the prokaryotic host, we have discussed about the eukaryotic host. Within the prokaryotic host, we have discussed about the uh, um, e. coli, we have discussed about the bacillus subtilis, we have also discussed about the comparative uh, analysis of the E. coli as a host or the uh, bacillus subtilis as a host. In addition to that, in detail we have discussed about the eukaryotic host where we have discussed about the yeast as a, uh, ho yeast as a host, uh, uh, insect cell line as a host or the mammalian cells as a host. Now, apart from the host, we have also discussed, uh, discussed uh, we have also started the discussing about the uh, transforming agents, right. So, within that we have initially discussed about the vectors and uh, what are the different components of the vectors and how you can be able to assemble a vector. And now, if you recall in the previous lecture, we have also discussed about the uh, the different types of uh, vectors. So, we have within that we have also started discussing about the bacterial plasmids and in the previous lecture we have discussed about the different properties of the uh, plasmids and how you can be able to purify the plasmid from the transformed cells. Now, in today's lecture we are going to discuss about uh, some more transforming agents. So, now what you see here is that in the different uh, vectors what we are planning to discuss in this particular chapter, we have discussed about the bacterial plasmids, right. Now we are going to discuss about the eukaryotic uh, vectors, right. So, we will going to start discuss, uh, so we will, uh, so we have a discuss about the bacterial plasmids, right. So, in the within the bacterial plasmid, we have discussed about the uh, E. coli uh, based plasmid, right. And uh, if you recall uh, when we were discussing about the uh, E. coli based vectors, right. So, we, when we were discussing about the uh, host, we have discussed about the E. coli as a host and then we also discuss about the bacillus subtilis as a host, right. So, it is important that we should discuss about the uh, plasmids or vectors which are related to the uh, bacillus subtilis. So, bacillus subtilis uh, vector, so generally vectors are the vehicle that introduce a foreign DNA into an organism genome. In case of bacillus subtilis, several vectors are commonly used for genetic manipulations. As studied earlier, these vectors also contain the critical sites such as origin of replications, selection markers, promoters, multiple cloning site, reporter genes and as well as the terminators. So, uh, bacillus subtilis uh, vectors are uh, having the similar kind of uh, components what we require for making a uh, plasmid, right or what we require the plasma vector which is whether it would be a cloning vector or the expression vectors. Now, some of the commonly used uh, vectors for bacillus subtilis includes the PUB110, right a small low copy number plasmid commonly used in bacillus subtilis. It carries gene for resistance to the antibiotics such as canamycin or the chloramphenicol. So, this is the P vector map of the PUB110. The size of this uh, vector of vector is uh, 4584 uh, base pairs, right. It has a canamycin resistance gene, it has the uh, reporter genes, right and it also has the multiple cloning site on this site. So, where you can have the flexibility of using the NCO1 or other kinds of restriction enzyme. Uh, then we also have the another vector which is called as PB, uh, PB BS series. These vectors are derived from the PUB110 and modified for various applications such as protein expression or the purification. So, this is the P blue, P blue script uh, uh, vector and P blue script vector has the size of 2961. It has the reporter gene uh, which is the P, uh, P blue script and it has the 
uh, lag z promoter so it has a lag z ring which you can use for the blue word screening and then it also has the multiple cloning site where you can actually be able to clone the foreign dna then we have the uh, pe 194 so another widely used plasmid in bacillus subtilis research it carries gene for the resistance for the antibiotics such as arthromycin or the tetracycline so this is the vector map of pe 194 where you have the uh, and uh, where you have the uh, uh, antibiotic resistance genes and tetracycline resistance genes and so on. Now, as far as the uh, Pestilus subtilis vector is concerned, we have another vector which is called as PAX series. These vectors are engineered for the protein gene expression studies in Bacillus subtilis and contain the strong promoter for driving the expressions. These are the just few examples and many other vectors are available for the genetic manipulation in the Bacillus subtilis each with its advantage and specific applications. Depending upon on their specific research need, you may choose a vector that best suits for your experimental examples. So, these are the two vectors what we have discussed from the uh, prokaryotic system. We have also having the many vectors from the eukaryotic system. So, let us discuss about the eukaryotic vectors. So, within the eukaryotic vectors, we have the three different types of choices. We have the uh, yeast vectors, we have the phage based vectors and we also have the mammalian vectors. Now, when you use the eukaryotic vectors, they are also going to serve the same purpose. That vector is uh, extra chromosomal DNA and they are actually, uh, so a vector could exist in two forms when you are talking about the eukaryotic vectors. Either they could be exist as extra chromosomal DNA. So, these vectors remains in the eukaryotic cell as extra chromosomal DNA and expresses the proteins or you can have the integration vectors. So, in the integration vector, these vectors carries an integration site to facilitate the recombination mediated integration into the chromosomal DNA of the host cells. Now, let us talk about the eukaryotic uh, plasmids. So, first is um, the yeast based vectors. So, you can actually have the yeast vectors. These all have the couple of similar features such as the presence of multiple cloning sites, shuttle vectors, that means it is going to have an origin or application for E. coli and yeast and the presence of selectable marker. There are three different types of yeast based vectors. One is episomal vectors. So, yeast episomal vector are constructed by combining the bacterial plasmid either with the yeast 2 micron origin or application or with autonomous replicating sequences. Uh, this is the one of the example of YEP24. So, this is a representative 2 micron based vector, episomal vector. It is a 6.3 kilogalpin plasmid with a copy number in the range of 50 to 100. These plasmids are much more stable than the uh, ARS containing plasmids. Then we have the integrating vectors. So, that was the uh, replicating episomal vectors. Here you can have the integrating vectors. So, episomal yeast vectors are present as a extra chromosomal DNA and are unstable. This can overcome by integration of the vector into the host chromosomes. In yeast integration occurs by the homologous recombinations. In yeast, the integration plasmid contains the target sequences for the integration into the chromosomal DNA, selection marker and the bacterial origin of replications. Before vector delivered to the yeast, it is digested with a unique restriction endonuclease to produce a linear DNA to increase the transformation efficiency and integration. This anyway we are going to discuss when we will discuss about the DNA delivery into the host. right? In most of the cases, the integration is done in such a way that the yeast chromosomal DNA remain intact and integration may not affect the yeast growth. But in alternate approach, a portion of the yeast chromosomal DNA is uh, replaced with the vector DNA through a homologous recombination. These vectors are known as the transplant integration vector and they may have a foreign DNA selection marker and homologous DNA to the region of chromosomal DNA to be replaced. So, then we have the yeast artificial chromosome which is also called as YAC right and you uh, when we were discussing about the um, you know the vectors we have said that vectors have a their own carrying capacity and that time we have mentioned that the yak has the maximum amount of capacity to carry the uh, 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 your external gene right. So, the yeast artificial chromosome or yak is the vector of choice used to clone very large fragments such as more than 100 kilobytes pair 
to prepare the genomic library yak vector is like a chromosome as it has the ars sequences centromere sequences and telomere at the two end to give the stability it has an ampicillin resistant gene for selection in e coli and an e coli origin of replication for the propagation in bacteria in addition it has the ars for replication uh, cen for centromere functions and ura3 and trip1 for the selection in yeast so, this is a vector map of the uh, yak where you have the CEN sequences for the centromere, we have the ARS sequences uh, and then you also have the uh, URA3 and TRIP. So, URA3 is a is a selection marker for selecting for against the on a oxotrophic uh, plates containing the uracil and the TRIP1 is for the tryptophan. So, these are the some of the things which are required for making the selection within the yeast. For cloning the yak is digested with the SME and BAMH1. So, these are the restriction enzyme and alkaline phosphatase to generate a linear plasmid DNA. Now, foreign DNA is added with the ligation. The recombinant DNA will allow a yeast to grow on uracil and the tryptophan deficient media. Then we have the bacterial artificial chromosome at BAC, right. So, BACs are cloning, uh, cloning derived from the naturally occurring F plasmid in E. coli. They have the capability to clone the large inserts into the host organisms. BAC vectors have a low copy number, which means they are present in a fewer copies for bacterial cells. This feature helps maintain the stability of the large DNA insert. And this is the uh, vector map of a back where you have the size of the 7 kb and you have the different types of properties and this is the multiple cloning site where you are actually going to insert the uh, foreign DNA. Then uh, back vectors usually contain an origin of application derived from the F plasmid, a selectable marker such as antibiotic resistance and a cloning site for the inserting the DNA fragments. They also have another gene which is called as rep e that helps to replicate and maintain the copy number the par ab system or the partitioning system ensure the stable inheritance of the pack during the cell division by uh, segregating the plasmid into the daughter cells these vectors can accommodate the dna insert ranging from the 100 to 300 clay space pair or even larger Back libraries which consist of collections of genomic DNA fragments cloned into the back vectors are valuable resource for genome mapping, uh, sequencing and the functional studies. And you will understand when we were going to discuss about the genomic libraries, the usage of the yak and the back into that. So, that time you will understand how, uh, how valuable these two uh, different these two plasmids are. Then we have the P1 derived uh, artificial chromosome or PAC actually. So, these are called as PAC or P1 derived artificial chromosomes. PACs are derived from the P1 bacteriophage, a virus that infects the bacteria such as E. coli. PAC vectors are similar to BAC vector in structure and function, but, it, uh, but are based on the replication and maintenance mechanism of the P1 phase. Uh, P pack vectors are also having a low copy number allowing for the stable maintenance of the large DNA inserts. Like BACs, uh, pack vectors contain an origin of application and selection marker and a cloning site for the DNA insertions. It has the two LOXP sites to help circularize the plasmid while uh, C CRE LOX recombinations. This circular plasmids are inserted into the host cells using the electroporations. So, these are the some of the transformation methods. So, electroporation is a transformation method through which you can actually going to deliver the DNA into the host cells. This all we are going to discuss when we are going to discuss about the DNA delivery in the next chapter. Then the pack vectors can accommodate the DNA insert of similar size as back, right. So, ranging from the 10 to hundreds of kilo base pairs. Pack libraries are used for genome mapping, sequencing and functional genomics studies like the back libraries. Both back and packs have revolutionized the field of the molecular biology by enabling the manipulation and analysis of large genomic regions. They are invaluable tool for studying the complex genomes including those of human and other organisms and have contributed significantly to our standing of genetics, development 
and diseases okay so these are things you will appreciate you will uh, appreciate the importance of the pack and back or even yak also when we are going to discuss about the cdna library or the uh, genomic library and how these are going to be utilized for preparing of those so so far what we have discussed we have discussed about the prokaryotic vectors we have discussed about the bacteria uh, vector which is being used in the e coli as a host we have also discussed about the vectors for the uh, bacillus subtilis and then uh, coming to the eukaryotic vectors we have discussed about the yeast based vectors so we have discussed about the yak we have discussed about the episomal vectors we have discussed about the integrating vectors and then uh, coming to the uh, bac uh, bacterial derived vectors we have also discussed about the back and we have also discussed about the p1 derived artificial chromosome or the pack and then we also discuss about the importance of these vectors and their application into the molecular biology now let's move on and discuss about the mammalian vectors and the insect based vectors so we have discussed about the bacterial vectors we have discussed about the yeast based vector and now we are going to discuss about the mammalian vectors and as well as the phase fast based vectors so when we talk about the insect cell line as a host we also have the vectors for uh, you know uh, for uh, over expressing the proteins into the insect cell lines so let's discuss first the insect cell line vectors and then we will discuss about the mammalian vectors so in the insect cell line you are going to use the baculovirus vectors right and these uh, baculovirus vectors are being used so this is a typical baculovirus vector where you have the cloning site and then you are actually going to have the uh, pi, pi prime end and the 3 prime end which is derived from the baculovirus right and this is the portion which is actually going to be used for the protein production so baculovirus is a rod shaped virus which infects the invertebrates such as insect cell lines post infection the virus is either released as a free virion or many particles are trapped in a protein complex known as polyhedron so this polyhedron is actually a protein so the protein responsible for trapping the virus into polyhedron is called as polyhydrin and it helps in the transmission of virus from one host to other the polyhydrin is not important for the virus propagation but it is under very strong promoter to produce the protein in large quantity realizing this fact the replacement of the polyhydrin gene with a foreign dna fragment will allow the expression of a protein in a large quantity the baculovirus uh, autographa california ka multiple uh, nuclear polyhedrous virus or acmnpp is used as a vector to express the proteins the transfer vector of acid is given here right the gene of interest will be inserted into the cloning site placed adjacent to the promoter it has a polyhedron termination sequences downstream to the cloning site to stop the transcription of the clone gene now let's talk about the eukaryotic mammalian vectors so this is a typical mammalian vector so large number of excellent mammalian vectors are in circulation to clone the eukaryotic gene for protein synthesis and study the transcription mechanism it contains a eukaryotic replication of origin uh, which is a replication origin right so it is actually a shuttle vector right because it is going to have the two different types of origin of replication so it has a eukaryotic origin of replication it has the e coli or the origin of replication so it is actually a shuttle vector then virus such as sv40 from the simian virus it has a promoter to derive the expression of the foreign gene and a selection marker and the other eukaryotic features such as polyadenylation transcription termination site and all that is present so this is the amyltypical cloning site this is the promoters and this is the polyadenylation site and then uh, you are going to have the selection marker so that is uh, you are going to have the ampicillin resistance gene and then it is can be so there are multiple method through which you can be able to transfect the eukaryotic vector into the uh, into the mammalian cells and so on and that we are going to discuss in our subsequent uh, class okay so uh, then we'll talk about the bacteriophage as vector so bacteriophage often called as phages are virus that infect and replicate within the bacteria they compromise the protein encapsulating a dna or rna genome and considered among the virus 
most abundant and diverse entities. Another critical feature of virus uh, vectors utilized for gene cloning has been engineered using the genome of these bacteriophage. These vectors have several advantages like cloning large inserts and screening many bacteriophage plaques. The most common bacteriophage used as a vector are lambda and the M13 fuzzles. They are frequently used to make the cloning vector for the E. coli. So, bacteriophage is a very, very robust system. It is being used to infect the bacteria and that is why it is can be utilized or can be modified in such a way that it can be used for as a vector. So, it has the two different uh, vectors. Uh, you have the lambda phase, lambda based vector or M13 phased, phase based vectors. Now, lambda 13 or lambda phase vectors. So, lambda phases or bacteriophage lambda are type of bacteriophage that infects the bacterium E. coli. The following section describe these phase various characteristics that help them to a model system for the biological research. So, it has the head, it has a tail and it has a genome size. So, head the G lambda phase has an isocentral head with a double standard DNA genome. It has a flexible non-contractile tail that ends with the complex uh, base uh, plates and tailored uh, fibers which helps the FAS to attach to the bacterial surface. Then the LaFAS lambda contains genome which is 48490 base pair. It has contained approximately 50 genes that are organized into the operon. The genome has an origin of applications, genome of the viral head protein and a tailored tail protein and the enzymes involved in the lytic and the lysogenic life cycles. This lytic and the lysogenic life cycles we are going to discuss in detail uh, in subsequent uh, sections. Now, uh, the linear and the circular form. So, in the capsid, the, the DNA uh, genome is linear and has a sticky end called as cos sites and these cos sites are 12 base pair long on both end of the viral genome. Upon genome entry into the bacterial cell, the cos sequences pair up and are ligated by the Hohn's enzyme to produce the heterodyne. So, in the capsid when it is when the virus is free actually it is going to be linear right and when the virus is present inside the bacteria it is going to be circular ok. And how it is circularized? It is using the cos side. So, you are actually going to if so you are going to have the linear chain right and on both the ends you are going to have the cos sites ok. So, you are going to have the linear DNA and when it will enter into the bacteria it is going to be circularized using these two complementary sequences. Now, let us talk about the lytics and the lysis cycle. So, the life cycle of the lambda phase is having the two different types of phases. You have the uh, lytic phase and you have the lysis phase ok. So, you have a lysogeny phase, you have a lytic phase. So, the lambda phase can undergo a lytic and the lysogenic cycles align them to destroy the host cells or integrate into the host genome. The decision between the lytic and the lysogenic pathway is tightly regulated by a balance between the C i repressor and the crow protein. So, C i repressor promotes the lysogeny by representing the lytic uh, genes and activating its synthesis whereas, the crow protein promote the lytic cycle by representing the repressing the synthesis of the C i repressors. So, first we will discuss about the lytic cycle, then we will discuss about the lysogenic cycles. So, lytic cycle, uh, the lambda phase attached to the maltose binding maltose receptor lamb B on the surface of the E. coli bacteria using its tail fibers. This is known as the attach attachment or the adsorption step. The phase inject its double standard DNA into host cell through a bacterial cell wall and membrane. As soon as the fast DNA is inserted into E. coli, the early genes are transcribed by the host machinery. The end protein and anti terminator is produced and allow the transcription of the delayed early genes. Protein involves in DNA replications, O and P recombinations and the decision between the lytic and lysogenic pathway, these are part of the delayed early genes. So, these delayed early genes are actually going to produce the proteins. So, that it is actually going to involve into the DNA applications, recombinations and to decide whether I should go for the lytic cycle or the lysis cycles. 
the fast uh, DNA circularizes using the cos sites and initiates the replication. The O and P protein initiates the replications making the multiple copies of the lambda DNA. This replication is known as the rolling circle replications in which a template stand rotates churning out a chain of many copies of the fast DNA. So, what happen is that once it gets circularized right it has a double standard DNA right it is actually going to have the rolling circle model. So, it is going to have uh, uh, the uh, DNA polymerase going in this way right. So, it is going like this ok and the another DNA polymerase which goes like this ok. So, it when it goes like this ok it is actually synthesizing a linear chain of this which contains the cos site on both the ends. So, it after see it will start for example, it will start from here right and then it will reach to this point again ok. It will reach to this point again right and then it has actually generated the one unit and you know that when we discuss right the circularization is by the cos site right. So, you are actually going to have uh, two cos site on this side right cos site coming from this direction coming side from this direction. So, cos site is going to be a marker that ok this is the full length of the genome right. So, cos site is actually going to be synthesized like this ok. And then what will happen is it is going to cleaved from here and that is how it is actually going to make the multiple copies. The resulting fast genome are concatenated at one end and cleaved at the cos site to be packed with the new phase particles. So, this is going to be broken right. So, this is going to be broken and it is actually going to make a this genome and then this genome is actually going to be packed into the capsid right. So, this is going to pack into capsid and then this actually is going to be released from the E. coli and it will infect the new cells. The Q protein another anti terminator transcribe the late genes which encode the structural component of the FAS that is the head and the tail protein and the lysis protein which is R and S. And this is the complete lytic cycle. Uh, so, what will happen is that in the first step you are at the, the virus will in uh, well virus will use the tail and it will uh, attach to the uh, E. coli cells right and then it is actually going to inject its genome. As soon as the in, in genome is injected it is going to be circularized use, utilizing the cos site right. So, it is going to circularize using the cos site co on both the sides ok. Once the cos site is done then it is actually going to activate the genes which is required for the replications which is required for the recombination and so on. And then it is actually going to go through a cycle of rolling circle model. So, it at this stage it is there will be a rolling circle model. Uh, you do not have to worry about these terminologies and the mechanism how the rolling circuit model works right. What the more important thing is that you are going to have a you know the ball like and then if you sit the DNA polymerase 1 it is actually going to be keep growing like this ok. It will be keep circulating the template and that is how it is keep generating the linear DNA. And this linear DNA will have the cos site in between right because it is been made as a circle using the cos sites right. And then it is going to be cleaved wherever the cos site is present ok. So, it is actually going to be cleaved by the cos site and that is how the it is actually going to uh, complete its life cycle. So, the empty head particles are packaged with the replicated phage genome in the linear form. The newly synthesized phage component are assembled into the mature phage particle. The assembly of the new phage particle occur within the hijacked bacterial cell. The R and S protein in cause the bacterial cell wall to be break down releasing the new phage to infect the other cells. So, once the this uh, uh, packaging of this uh, genome is done because by the time the genome is replicating it is also going to synthesize the head and the tail right it is also going to synthesize the head and tail and then this bacterial genome is going to be packed into the head and tail and that is how it is actually going to be responsible for generation of virons particle. And then these once these particles are present then the there will be a synthesis of the R and S proteins and that will cause the lysis of the bacterial cell and that is how these virus particles are going to be released to infect the new bacteria. Then we have the lysogenic cycles. So, like the lytic cycles the lambda phase 
attached to the E. coli and inject its DNA. The C2 protein stabilized by C3 activates the transcription of the CI gene producing the CI repressors. The CI repressor shut down the lytic genes and promote the transcription of the integrase gene. The integrase gene enzyme catalyzes the integration of the fast DNA into the host genome at a specific site becoming a prophase. The CI repressor maintains the lysogenic state by continuously repressing the lytic genes. The prophase is replicated along with the host cells DNA during the bacterial cell division passing the prophase to the daughter cells under ex certain stress conditions that is the UV light chemicals the prophase can be induced to exercise the host genome to excise the host genome. The CI repressor is inactivating allowing the transcription of the lytic genes the first enter the lytic cycle uh, replicating and eventually lies the host cells. So, the lysogenic cycles and lytic cycles continuously operates in the single uh, cell. Okay. So, this is what exactly what is given in your textbook also this is the lysogenic cycles. So, initial stage is that the virus is going to replicate virus is going to attach and inject the DNA the so, linear DNA is going to be injected. Then this linear DNA will activate the, the C2 cycle right. So, it is actually going to attack the C1 and this is actually going to activate the CI rep repressors right and once the CI repressor is done it is actually going to block the lytic cycles right it is going to stop the uh, replication of the RNA polymerase as uh, the uh, stop the replications of the genome and then it is also going to induce the recombinations and because of that this is going to be integrated into the genome of the bacteria and it is becoming the uh, prophase right and then the bacteria is actually going to divide ok. So, bacterial cell will divide without any lysis ok and once they will reach to a stage then then the lytic cycle is going to be activated and then it is actually going to do the same as it is actually going to have the rolling circle model it is going to release the large quantity of the DNA copies and then these are going to packed into the virus particles and then the virus is actually going to induce the RNS proteins and that is how it is going to be lysed. So, lysis cycle and lytic cycle both are being regulated by the two different types of proteins right. Uh, so, these are the some of the vectors which are based on the bacteriophage lambda. So, vector constructed using lambda can be categorized into two types insertion vectors and the replacement or the substitution vectors. So, insertion vectors these vectors allow the foreign DNA inserted into a specific site within the fast genome. Typically insertion vector can accommodate inserts of up to 10 kb. Examples of such vectors are lambda gt10 and the lambda gt11. Similarly, we have the replacement vectors. So, these vectors contain two non-essential region of the fast genome that can be replaced with the foreign DNA. The Shuttler fragment between this fragment is replaced with a DNA of interest. Replacement vector can carry the larger inserts usually between 15 to 25 kb. Examples of such vectors are lambda EMBL3 and the lambda dash. Now, what is the key features of the lambda phase vectors right. So, you can have the cos sites cos sites are sequence at the end of the uh, lambda genome that facilitate the packing into the DNA into the fast B heads. Then we have a selection marker. So, vectors often contain antibiotic resistance gene or other selectable marker to facilitate the identification of the recombinant clones. Then we have the multiple cloning sites. So, insertion vector typically have the MCC uh, multiple cloning site, short DNA fragment containing several restriction enzyme recognition site. This allows for the easy insertion of the foreign DNA. In contrast, replacement vectors have a pair of cloning site to remove. Then we have the shuffer fragments. So, replacement vector contains a shuffer fragment that is removed and replaced with a foreign DNA. This fragment is often flanked by a restriction site to facilitate the cloning. How you can be construct a recombinant facilita? So, you can actually have the DNA insertion. So, DNA insertion or the DNA of interest is inserted into the vector using the restriction enzyme and a ligase. The stuffer uh, fragment is removed and replaced with a foreign DNA for the replacement vectors. 
then you can have the packaging the recombinant dna is packed into the lambda phase particles using in vitro packaging extract this particle can then infect the e coli cells screening and selection so infected e coli cells are plated and plaque are screened for the recombinant phase selectable markers and blue white screening can also identify the recombinant clones what is the applications of the uh, lambda fast vectors so you can have you can use them for the genomic library preparations so lambda vectors are used to create the uh, genomic library by cloning the fragment of a organism's dna the large capacity of the lambda vectors make them suitable for this purpose then you can use them for the cdna library constructions lambda vector can be used to construct the cdna library which represent the expressed gene of an organism this is useful for studying the gene expression and functions then you can use them for the gene cloning researchers use the lambda vectors to clone and analyze the specific genes the vectors efficiency in infecting the e coli and other ability to carry the dna inserts make them ideal for this purpose then you can also use for the functional studies lambda vector can be used in the functional studies to express the protein and uh, study in their function in e coli some vectors like the lambda gt11 allow the inserted genome to be expressed as a fusion protein with beta galactosidase and if you if this is so you can be able to do blue white screening what are the examples of the lambda uh, vectors so you can have the lambda gt10 you can have the lambda gt11 you can have the lambda embl3 you can have the lambda dash and these are the properties of these vectors now let's move on to the next fast vector which is the m13 fast vector so m13 fast is a filamentous bacteriophage belonging to the inoviridae family known for infecting e coli it has been widely used as a molecular biology tool in the gene cloning and several other processes the following are the few characteristic of this fast first such first is this is a filamentous shape so m13 fast is a characterized by its long thin filamentous structure approximately 900 nanometer in length and 6.5 nanometer in uh, diameter so this is the Uh, M13 fast where you have this length is 900 nanometers and the diameter of this is actually 6.5 nanometer then the genome uh, M13 has a circular single stranded dna genome containing 6.4 kilobase pair in length packaged in the tube like casket it encodes for the gene 1 to 10 which are essential for the forming the coat proteins viral assembly and the viral replications during infection the single stranded dna is converted into the double stranded dna inside the host cells so these are the intergenic regions right then we also have the capsid so number 3 you are going to have the capsid proteins so the fast primarily comprises the multiple copies of the major coat protein which is pv uh, third which forms the bulk of the filamentous structure the end of the fast are capped with a minor coat proteins including p3 and p4 at one end and p7 and p9 at the other then we have the attachments and the entry so bacteriophage m13 intact e coli harboring in f plasmids these cells have a tubular structure called pilies extended from their membrane the m13 fast attached to the fpd of e coli using this p3 uh, protein the fast dna is then transported into the bacterial cell number 8 the replications so inside the host the single stranded genome is converted into a double stranded replication fog uh, the rf serve as a template for the synthesis of new single stranded genome subsequently the mode of replication changes to generate a single stranded genome from a double stranded replicative form then what is the life cycle of m13 fas so we can have the protein synthesis and you have the extru extrusions so the fast proteins are synthesized from the rf dna newly synthesized uh, single stranded genomes are packed into the fast particle by assembling with the coat proteins then uh, m13 does does not lyse the host cells instead the new fast particles are extruded through the bacterial membrane allowing the host cells to continue growing and dividing this leads to the chronic infection where the fast particles are continuously released 
So, this is what exactly happens, right? You are going to have the single stranded uh, fast DNA which is going to be converted into replicative form. From this replicative form, you are going to have the single stranded uh, genome and then it is actually going to be packed into the uh, particles and then these particles are going to be extruded into the external environment and then it is going to cause the infection to the nest cells. Now, talking about the M13 vectors. So, M13 vectors are derived from the M13 bacteriophage and are used in the molecular biology for cloning sequences and fast display. The double standard RF DNA is isolated from the infected cell and used as a vector. The following are some of the characteristics. First is uh, single standard DNA production. So, M13 vector produce single standard DNA which is beneficial for the various applications such as DNA sequencing, site directed mutagenesis and creating the single standard probes. Then you also have the multiple cloning sites. So, M13 cloning typically contain MCS within the LAXZ alpha gene which allows for the insertion of the foreign DNA. This facilitate the blue white screening for the identification of the recombinant clones. Uh, you can also have the LAXZ alpha complementations and the phage origin of application. The presence of LAXZ alpha uh, gene enables the blue white screening. When foreign DNA is inserted into the MCS, the LAXZ gene is disrupted and the recombinant clone cannot be identified as white colonies on the XCAL IPTG plate while the non recombinant clones appears blue. Then we have the phage origin of replications. The vector containing the original application from the M13 FAS allowing them to replicate as a single standard DNA within the host cells. What is the applications of the M13 uh, vectors? So, it is used for the DNA sequencing, it is being used for the site directed mutagenesis and it is being used for the fast display and the library constructions. For the DNA sequencing as, I, as I, we have discussed that the M4, M13 FAS is going to generate the single standard DNA right. So, M13 vectors are widely used for producing the single standard DNA template required for the Sanger sequencing. The single standard nature of the DNA allow for the synthesis of the complementary strand using the sequencing reactions. Then we have the you we can use that for site directed mutagenesis. The ability to produce a single standard DNA is crucial for the site directed mutagenesis technique where the site specific nucleotide chains are introduced into the neural sequence. Then we have the fast display. M13 vectors are also engineered to display the peptide and protein onto the surface of the fast. This can be achieved by fusing the gene encoding the peptide or the protein of interest with the gene encoding the P3 or P7, uh, P8 uh, code proteins. Fast display identifies the protein protein interaction, select the high affinity antibodies and evolves protein with desired properties. So, this is a very, very, very important application of the uh, FOG vectors, M13 FAS vector because they can be used in the FAS display. Then they are also being used for the library construction. So, M13 vectors are used to construct the library of DNA sequences such as the cDNA library or for functional screening and identification of the gene of interest. Now, talking about the more vectors, so these are the cosmids. Cosmids are the hybrid vectors, right? And uh, they are very, very important and useful. So, cosmids are hybrid vectors that combine the feature of plasmids and bacteriophage lambda, allowing them to clone the large DNA fragment. They replicate as plasmid, but can be packaged uh, into the lambda phage coat. The following are the few characteristics of the cosmids. They have the cos sites, they have the plasmid origin of the application, they have the selectable marker. So, cos sites, the cosmid contain the cos sites derived from the lambda FAS which allow the DNA to be packed into the FAS particle. This is crucial for the efficient delivery into the bacterial cell. Then it also has the plasmid origin application. So, like plasmids, cosmids have an origin of application that enable them to replicate independently within a bacterial host. Then you have a selector marker. So, they typically carry the antibiotic resistant genes such as ampicillin and that allow the selection of bacterial cell containing the cosmids. Then it also has the multiple cloning sites and uh, the MCS is present for inserting the foreign DNA fragment. Uh, it contains the several unique restriction enzyme recognition site to facilitate the cloning. 
then it also has the high capacity. So, as little as 250 base pairs of the lambda DNA is sufficient to provide the cause junctions including the sequences required for the binding and cleavage by the enzyme called terminase. The rest of the components are taken uh, from the plasmid and this make them able to carry large inserts of DNA typically from 35 to 45 kilo base pair. This make them useful for cloning the large genomic fragments. So, this is the typical cosmid vectors where you have the cos sites, you have the polylinkers, you have the ampicillin resistance genes. So, this is the ampicillin resistance genes and then you also have the origin of replications. So, the origin of replication is for E. coli right and that is why it is actually can replicate into the E. coli system and then it has a cos site. So, it actually can allow the recircularization of the uh, fudge particles and so on. Construction of the cosmids. So, insertion of the foreign DNA, the DNA fragment to be cloned is ligated into the MCS of the cosmid. The cos site ensure the recombinant DNA can be packed into the lambda fudge particles. Packaging and infection, the recombinant uh, cosmid DNA is mixed with the lambda packaging extract. These extract contain the necessary protein to package the DNA into the fudge head creating the infective particles. The packaged cosmids are then used to infect the E. coli cell where they deliver the recombinant DNA efficiently. Selection and screening, infected DNA are plaqued on the agar containing the appropriate antibiotic. Only the cell that have been taken up the cosmid will survive and form the colonies. Colonies can be screened for the presence of desired insert using the technique like colony PCR or the restriction digestion analysis. Now, what is the application of the cosmids? So, uh, you can uh, use that for the genomic library constructions, you can use that for the gene cloning, you can use that for the functional studies and you can use that for the physical mapping. So, they are used in physical mapping projects to assemble the large continuous genome region by overlapping the cloning fragment. This means, if you are actually going to work with the human genome for example, right. And uh, what you can do is you can generate the fragments with the overlapping sequences like this. Okay. So, what will happen is this overlapping fragment is allowing to you put that okay, this is the fragment number 1, this is the fragment number 2 and this is the fragment number 3. So, that is how you can be able to do the mapping of the human genome using the cosmids because cosmids will allow you to clone the large fragments. Then the second and uh, third the next uh, vector is the phosmid. So, phosmids are the vector that combine feature of both plasmid and bacteriophage. They are desired to leverage the advantage of both system particularly for the cloning the large DNA fragment and efficient transfer of recombinant DNA into the bacterial cell. There are uh, following are the characteristic of the phosmids. Structure and the features of the phosmid, these vectors are linear duplex DNA whose ends are lambda fast DNA that incorporate all the essential elements from the lambda fast genome such as cos sites which are necessary for the packaging DNA into the fast particle. The, the cos sites enable the recombinant DNA to be packed into the lambda fast head for efficient transfer into the E. coli. These recombinant phases are packed in vitro before infections. Then it also has the origin of replications. So, you can have the selectable marker, you can have a multiple cloning site and then you also have a hybrid nature. So, phosmids can exist in two forms as a plasmid is inside E. coli and as a phage particles when packed and transferred using the lambda phage systems. So, and it also has the origin of replications. So, it has the origin of replication from the E. coli and it also has the uh, DNA fragments from the phage. They carry the antibiotic resistance genes such as ampicillins for the selecting the bacterial cell that contain the plasmid and then it has the MCS with multiple restriction site that is included for the that is utilized for the uh, for the inserting the foreign DNA. What is the application of the phosmid? So, it can be used for the genomic library constructions, it can be used for the gene cloning and it can be used for the efficient DNA transfer because it, it is utilizing the features of the bacteriophage. So, the ability to pack into the phage particle allow for the efficient transfer of the recombinant DNA into the E. coli cell combining the high efficiency of the phage infection with the ability of the plasmid applications. 
So, these are the some of the vectors what we are we have discussed we have discussed about the bacterial vectors we have or prokaryotic vectors we have discussed about the eukaryotic vectors. So, within the eukaryotic vectors we have discussed about the uh, yeast based vector we have discussed about insect cell line based vector we have discussed the phage based vectors we have discussed about the cosmids and we also discuss about the phasmids. Uh, now, let us see the uh, uh, the comparative statement of all these uh, uh, features right. So, you can actually have the uh, plasmids you can have the bacteriophage vectors and you can also have the artificial chromosomes and these are the comparative uh, properties of all the three species. First property is the DNA insert size. So, plasmid is very uh, small to take up the external DNA only 10 kb whereas, the bacteriophage vector can take up up to 45 kilo, kilo base pairs whereas, the artificial chromosomes uh, 100 to 300 for BACs, 300 to 500 for PACs and the more than 500 for the YAKs. Similarly, the host system, so host system for these three will be like bacteria, plasmids, uh, uh, bacteriophage will be bacteria whereas, for the artificial chromosome it will be bacteria for the BACs, it will be yeast for the YAKs and it will be mammalian cells for the max. Uh, then we have the key applications, so key application would be uh, cloning and mutagenesis, genomic library preparations and so on. And then the disadvantages uh, for the plasmids it is the limited insert size whereas, for the bacteriophage it is the host specific can require more complex handling whereas, for the artificial chromosome it has a low copy number, so more complex manipulation due to the size. So, these are the some of the uh, vectors what we have discussed. So, we have discussed about the eukaryotic vectors, we have discussed about the eukaryotic vectors, we have discussed about the fast based vectors and we have also discussed about the vectors which you can use into the insect cell line. So, with this I would like to conclude my lecture in our subsequent lecture we are going to discuss some more aspects of recombinant technology. Thank you.